Alright, and just before we begin the speech, I do have to say, it contains potentially intense or sensitive material, therefore may not be suitable for all audiences. Alright. Your Honours, The Washington Post, access January of 2021. The case was unusual from the very beginning. An off-duty police officer came home from work and thinking she had found an intruder in her apartment, shot the man inside. But it quickly became clear that the officer Amber Geiger was in the wrong apartment and that the man she shot was not an intruder, but her neighbor, Botham John, a black man, age 26. Was justice complete after the sentencing of Amber Geiger? When retribution is delivered, is not justice fulfilled? Justice is a word commonly used, but one that lacks a common understanding. Justice is the equal application of the law. Everyone getting their due. So what do people want? When they cry for justice? How can polarized movements both cry for justice? Well, justice is based upon an understanding of rights and wrong, a person's worldview. But our worldviews are shaped within these polarized cultures, and it's easy to get caught up in this divide. As Christians, I simply ask that we stop and examine what the Lord requires of justice. As Christians, our primary response to justice shouldn't be to identify as black or white, neither left nor right, but as children of the light. The question of justice was explored amidst a society alienated by racial division and prejudice. We find ourselves in the midst of a trial of a black man who has been accused of rape, and to kill a mockingbird by Harper Lee. Mr. Tom Robinson, where were you on the evening of November 21st of last year? Oh, well, sir, I was going to and from the fields, like I did every day, sir. Seemed like nearly every day the eagles would have something for me to do. Toting water, chopping kindling, and that day, Miss Mayle at Eagle said she had something for me to do in the house. So I went in and turned around and... She sort of jumped on me. Jumped on you? Violently? Oh, no, sir. She hugged me. She hugged me around the waist. Uh, then what did she do? She reached up and kissed me on the side of the face. I say, Miss Mayle, let me out of here. And tried to run. But she had both her arms wrapped around my waist, sir. Uh, and then you ran? Oh, I sure did, sir. Why did you run? Well, Mr. Finch, I was scared of being in court like I am now. But, Mr. Robinson, you've testified that you were innocent of all charges placed against you. Were you scared you'd be in court so you'd have to face up to what you did? Oh, I know, sir. I was scared I'd be in court so I'd have to face up to what I didn't do. Gentlemen, I shall be brief, but I would like to take this time to remind you that this case is not a difficult one. It requires no minute sifting of evidence. No, this case is simple as black and white. And one more thing, gentlemen, before I quit. Thomas Jefferson made it very clear that all men are created equal. Now we know that not all men are created equal in the sense that some would have us believe. Some people are smarter than others. Some people have more opportunity than others. But there is one way in which all men are created equal. There is one human institution that makes the pauper the equal of a Rockefeller. The stupid man equal of an Einstein. That institution is a court. A court is only as strong as its jury. The jury is only as strong as the men who make it up. 
in the name of God. Do your duty. While the world's standards of justice are skewed by human error, including racial divide and selfish prejudice, God's standard of justice is perfect. Let's join the Apostle Paul as he responds once more to the question, what does God truly require of justice? Romans 1, 18 through 20, and 2, 1 through 14. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the ungodlessness and wickedness of the people. For what has been made known to them has been made clear. For since the beginning of time, God's invisible qualities have been made known to all men, so that all men are without excuse. You, therefore, are without excuse. You who pass judgment on someone else. For at whatever point you do so, you are condemning yourself. Now we know that God's judgment is based upon truth. So when you, a mere human being, pass judgment yet do the same things, are you not condemning yourself? Or do you show contempt for the riches of God's kindness, forbearance, and patience, not realizing that these things are intended to lead you to repentance? But because of your stubborn and unrepentant heart, you are throwing up wrath for yourself for the day of God's wrath. God will punish each person according to what they have done. To those in who persistence do good, and seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will grant eternal life. But to all who are self-seeking, who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and destruction. For God does not show favoritism. God, the perfect judge, delivers both justice and mercy. And as Christians, we must too. Let's return to the story of Amber Geiger to see both the justice and mercy in action and the witness impact testimony of Botham's brother, Brant Jean, as noted by Jessica McBride. I don't want to say twice or for the hundredth time how much you've taken from us. I think you'd know that. But I hope you go to God with all the guilt, all the bad things you may have done in the past. And if you're truly sorry, then I forgive you. If you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. And I wasn't ever going to say this in front of my family or anyone, but I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you. And the best would be to give your life to Christ. Because I know it's exactly what both of them will want you to do. I don't know if this is possible, but can I give her a hug? Please? Please? Friends, I contend to you. That justice is perfected when forgiveness is extended. Micah 6 8. For he has shown you, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, yet love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. These words penned by the prophet Micah echo in the immortal words of Harper Lee. In the name of God, do your duty.